to see all of you here this morning. Can I just ask, how many of you are using the large print that are back on the table? Just, I want to make sure I am running off enough copies. So there were four copies of the large print back there, and I want to make sure I'm making enough. So how many of you need, like using the large print? Can you put your hand up so I can count? Okay, one, okay. All right. Again, in the ends of your pews, if you did not sign up, not that you have to, but it's very helpful for the ladies setting up for communion and for running off worship services. If you did not respond that you're going to be here for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, please fill out that little slip and put it in the connection basket on your way out, just so we can have a good estimate, because we don't know how many are going to walk through the door for worship either. So we want to be sure that we are prepared for, you know, for our people plus whoever else may want to come and worship with us. So that will be helpful. If you order poinsettias, there are extra poinsettia plants because the ones that are color, white and pink, the, the, they were honest with me, they're not the best. So if you get here and you would rather take a red one that looks nicer, we do have extra red ones available. So, but there are white and pink, and when you take them home, you can make the choice. And finally, um, it's been an exciting ministry week for St. John. It just proves that we are in a vital location in this community. And if you can see on the back of the newsletter, but I ran into one of the boys who used to come play basketball, and he was a handful. And it would, if somebody would bump him the wrong way on the basketball court, more times than not, his fists would come out, and we'd either call his mom or call the police to get him out of here. Well, I ran into him the other day, and what he told the two girls that were nearby, he said, if this lady and the other people at that church weren't there for me, I would probably be in jail today. So that what we are doing in that ministry is absolutely important for these young people. And then um, a homeless woman came to the door Thursday, and we were able to take her to Laura's home on the other side of town, and they were able to give her a coat, boots, and socks. And it was, she was just abandoned. Somebody left her at CVS and didn't wait for her. And then the whole celebrate Christmas bags, we, are, we have eight families coming in, and that represents 18 children, besides the children here at St. John, that we're going to be giving celebrate Christmas bags that have crafts and puzzle books and everything about Jesus' birthday in there. And finally, um, a grandma called. She is feeding 18 people. Her adult children have lost their jobs. And she is stopping this afternoon to pick up food for a family of 18 that she is feeding. So I just want to say that what we are doing here on the corner of Turney and Granger is so important. And thank you for the food donations, for whatever, as our St. John family, we're doing. It's important. And just in three days, all those things happened. And it's because we're here. And so we can thank and praise God that he is allowing us to be the ones that touch these people's lives. And I don't have anything else to say as far as announcements. I think it's, but I think it's important for you to know what's going on. So Pastor, we have Pastor Padola back with us today. And lines up at the organ and follows us at the cameras. And we are ready to worship. Good morning, saints of God. Good morning. It is great to be with you again. I want you to take, because this is such a hectic time, I want you to take just a moment right now, step back, maybe even close your eyes, put your hands in your lap, be aware of your breathing, you leave everything that happened this last week outside, put it behind you, prepare yourself with me to enter into the presence of the Holy of Holies. Be aware of your breathing, give thanks to God for oxygen, 
and all of the simple things that we take so for granted, the clothing, the home, the warmth, for a boiler that works, for water and food. We begin then with, Hark the glad sound the Savior comes, in 349. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Be most merciful, God. We confess that we are in the nature of sin of our enemy. We have sinned against you in the cause of the word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, 
renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, 
whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house to see you? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that your enemies, that you should be prince over my people. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time when I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Our epistle is from Romans, the 16th chapter. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelations and mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings have been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. You may be seated as we sing the first four stanzas of hymn 357. O come, O come, Amen.
God's grace, his mercy, and his peace are yours from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, by the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. A few weeks ago on YouTube, I stumbled across a number of episodes of that old TV program, What's My Line? It ran from 1950 to 1975. In the program, I suspect you, most of you know, there were a panel of four who tried to guess the profession or the work of the guest. And they would go through three or four of them each, each um, episode. And once in each program, there was a, a mystery celebrity guest, so the, the, uh, Panelists were blindfolded so they could not see who it was and they were asked who that was. Sometimes the program was funny, like the woman who drove a garbage truck. Or sometimes it was surprising, like the nun who was a dentist. Sometimes it was very touching and moving. The same period had another program called I've Got a Secret that some of you may remember. Two, three of the ladies from my last congregation in Illinois were on that program twice while it was running. Their secret, these three sisters-in-law all had the name of Helen Luth, and they all lived on Rural Route 1, Newman, Illinois. I never heard whether the panelists actually guessed who they were or not. There are appropriate times to keep secrets, such as that, and of course, around Christmas time. There are lots of secrets. And there are times when it is not appropriate. In today's epistle, the Apostle Paul brings up something that was a secret, a great mystery, he calls it, but is no longer a secret. These three verses of today's gospel, today's epistle, excuse me, are the very end of St. Paul's letter to the Romans. It constitutes a doxology. The whole epistle, I don't know if you noticed, is one sentence. And the sentence in its simplest form is this. Now to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. But in between that now to and the ending section, St. Paul reiterates virtually the whole set of themes of the book of Romans. Indeed, the themes of most of his letters. A mystery revealed, which was hidden in the prophets, established with God's great loving purpose. In the first verse, Paul refers to the mystery that was kept through long ages. Throughout the New Testament, we hear this emphasized, that God had you in mind before he began the creation of the world. He had in mind to call you out of the darkness into his light. He had a plan from the beginning. He gave us a tiny glimpse of it right after our first parents fall into sin. The woman's offspring will bruise the serpent's head and the serpent will bruise his heel. But it was Paul's work to reveal this very simple, profound mystery. As he wrote to the Ephesians, it was his task to, quote, bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. A little bit later it continues, this was according to the eternal purpose which he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. Likewise, he wrote to the Colossians, 
His stewardship was to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed. There was a time when God's whole plan was a secret. But now with the coming of Messiah, that's changed. The mystery is revealed. The mystery that he referred to so often in his writings was nothing, nothing less than the amazing truth that God loves the Gentiles and that in Jesus God had acted on behalf of all people. Jew and Gentile, rich and poor, educated and uneducated, female and male, all human beings who are in need of being reconciled to the Creator because we are separated from God and from one another by our sin, by the sins of our parents, the sins of our friends, the sins of our culture, the sins of our enemies. And that reconciliation, that restoration, was accomplished by God in the work, the death, the birth, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, whose birth we remember this week in the liturgical year. This truth was embedded in the prophetic writings, Paul says. Although it seems that people miss that truth in the study of the Hebrew Scriptures. Even though these truths were proclaimed in the, in the words of the prophets, they were veiled until the advent of Messiah. Now, Jesus understood this truth. Think about it. Notice how many times Jesus had interactions where he praised the faith of a non-Jewish person. From the leper who returned from the ten to give thanks to God, to the Roman centurion who did not consider himself worthy for Jesus to come under his roof, to that Syrophoenician woman who would not leave him alone until he answered her prayer on behalf of her daughter. Jesus commends them. I have not found such faith in Israel. Jesus understood this, even as he understood what kind of Messiah he was born to be. In Luke's Gospel, which we heard something from the first verse, the first chapter uh, this morning in the Gospel, after he had risen from the dead, Jesus says, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Jesus saw himself, understood that he was the answer. Of, for all of those promises that God had given to his people over centuries, millennia, really. This was his purpose, as he goes on in that same passage, that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. Repentance. Does anybody really like that word? Because it means that we have to say to God, I need grace, grace alone. It's the way to God's heart. The way to God's heart is to acknowledge I have no way to your heart. We repent. That's what Paul proclaimed about himself and about us. That's what the other apostles proclaimed in their time. 
very often at great peril to themselves, no matter the price. They rejoiced that they were allowed to suffer for the sake of Christ's name. No matter the price, they proclaimed that in Jesus we have forgiveness for everything that is not right in us, everything that is not of God in us and our lives. And what's the purpose of all that? That redemption that Christ earned for us? Again, our text directs us to bring about the obedience of faith. The obedience of faith. And what does that look like? St. Paul is saying, as he has so many other places, that faith in Jesus Christ is always, to some degree, visible. It always involves some change in behavior. We are not to be the people we would be without Jesus in our lives. What is the place of good works in a Christian's life? You've probably heard the theological exploration of that. It depends on how you ask the question. Are good works necessary for salvation? The answer is emphatically no. When Jesus died on the cross, shedding his blood, sacrificing his body, it was enough. So when Jesus said, it is finished, he was talking about the whole salvation history up to that point. But if we ask the question another way, are good works necessary? The answer is yes, emphatically. Paul's epistles, if you're familiar with the structure of them, most of them spend about half the time talking about the theological reality that God loves people and hates sin and sacrificed his son for the sake of people. And the second half, talking about what the implications of that truth are for daily living. We are called to be different. Radically different. St. James in his letter, puts it so pointedly and powerfully. As the body apart from the spirit is dead, so faith apart from works is dead. That is a truth of scripture. Now, here is one of the dangers. And I've seen this. It's when, say, I as a pastor tell you what that means in your life. I spent hours and hours in my ministry counseling people who came out of one of those churches where everything was laid out and the, things, the demands were so burdensome that the people just burned out. Rather than teaching them about the freedom of the gospel, the freedom to serve, they were burdened with additional burdens. People burned out. Now good works, of course, are necessary. Luther is said to have pointed out that God does not need our good works. In Jesus, all that was taken care of. Still, they have our place. They have their place. Because our neighbor needs them. And I, I was so moved to hear what Karen was saying at the beginning of the service about the ministry this congregation is doing in this neighborhood. The neighbor needs our good works. And they come in all kinds of forms. It can be as simple as a phone call to somebody who's lonely. It can be as simply as a postcard 
or a Christmas card to someone who doesn't have any family or many friends or is shut in a nursing home or at his, his or her own house. When scripture says you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and your neighbor as yourself, and we ask, how do I do that? Loving God is nothing more. Get this, brothers and sisters in Christ. Loving God is nothing more than leaning on Jesus. It's trusting in everything that Jesus did for you, for me, for every human being. Now that, of course, has implications. We trust that relationship we have with God in Jesus, dependent on his mercy. And we know we can count on that mercy because he told us so. And he always keeps his word. Loving the neighbor is the place where good works apply because they benefit other people. And they demonstrate the reality of the faith in our heart. So the mystery then is no longer hidden. It is proclaimed from mountaintops. It's shared in the smallest room. It's preached around the world in various languages in all kinds of fancy and very simple settings. God so loved the world. Yes. This sometimes stinking, rotten, abusive, rebellious, unworthy world, that's the world that God loved so much that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Not because we earned it, not because we deserve it, but because God is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, and most of all, God is love. For all of his hatred of evil, God still loves his creation and continues to come to us, take care of us, lead us out of the valley of the shadow of death to his eternal salvation. So the bottom line for us then in our relationship with God is always, Lord, forgive. And the answer always is, in Jesus, you are forgiven, you are cleansed, you are washed in the precious good news of Jesus. That's what Jesus is all about. From his conception to his birth to his crucifixion and his resurrection, he's about forgiveness. Atoning for us, doing what we cannot do. That's where the gospel gets personal. He knows us by name. He calls us by name. The prophet even tells us that he has your name engraved on the palm of his hand. God loves you and that's the ultimate purpose then of all of this. That God, the holy, eternal, the only wise, the lover of souls should be glorified forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We finish the hymn we started before the message.
was in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. As you are able to say. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to the rules. O Most High, you have favored us in the incarnation of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary. In everything that it be to us according to your will, give us faith to believe that nothing is impossible with you, and so to pray boldly in childlike confidence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Most High, you have revealed in Christ Jesus the mystery kept secret for long ages, now made known to all nations through the prophetic and apostolic scriptures. According to your eternal command, give us faithful preachers of your gospel to bring about the obedience of faith. Bless Matthew, our synodical president, Heaven, our district president, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in Christ. Strengthen your holy church in every place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Most High, hear our prayers on behalf of our nation, its president, all legislators and judges, and those newly elected to serve. Give them wisdom. Preserve their lives and guide their actions for the good of our people. Give peace among the nations of the earth, and preserve us from pestilence and famine, war and bloodshed, sedition, rebellion, and every evil, and especially the curse of COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Most High, grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings. Look with compassion on the lonely, the depressed, and the despairing. Grant healing to the sick and give peace to the anxious and the dying. Especially Liliana, Ivana, Kay, Bill, Alicia, Chuck, Valerie, Carl, Carolyn, Vince, June and Chuck, David, Alan, Cyrus, Rich, Michael, Jim, and Annette as she prepares for surgery, with Sandy and Brian. Comfort all the more, especially the Gannon family and David. 
Comfort them with the certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, O Most High, grant that all who receive your Son's body and precious blood this day may do so in repentance and faith, and in the unity of the true confession. Work in us this Christmas a love and desire for your blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Be with those who need the Lord's guidance and peace, especially Caitlin, Jenny and Joan, Janice, Diane, and Bill, and those serving in the military. As we give thanks for the hope of safe return of Kyle. We likewise lift up Kenneth, Alan, Andrew, Clark, John, Seth, Raymond, and John to you, asking you to care for them and bring them safely home with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almost high, we give you thanks for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the key of David and the scepter of the house of Israel. By his death, he has opened the kingdom of heaven and flows the gates of hell for all who trust in him. By his resurrection, he has rescued the prisoners who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. Grant that as we recall with thanksgiving his advent in the flesh, we may always confess him and remain watchful for his advent in the glory at the last day. Who the same Jesus Christ our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, come out now and forever. Amen. May we see.
when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, bring us the body and blood to eat as you drink. We need us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rescue in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming from the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray in your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen.
नीचे दे दिया
slowing you down? Get unlimited access to the highest rated tech specialists with our best selling IT support bundle, starting at just $14.95 per user per month. Our support bundle includes antivirus, monthly reports, and much more. Visit www.weldonpc.com remote for more details. You can also enroll online or by phone by calling 216-475-6000.